Not the I Heart Mom shirt. I Heart Hot Moms. Oh, Hot Moms. Regular Moms, Hot Moms. No, it's not quite a dress for us. We can get people too. Yeah. We can do two. Five. 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 They look so good when they're in water. I'm videoing it. Do it right now. Do it. Do it. Go over there. Hurry. I've got two other cars in there. Quick. Ooh, not even. <laughs> and they count in all change. All of these. And, all it's, of and them. it's not just these, there's a whole other stand back more. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's all of those. Take your order. 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies, 55 cokes, 100 tater tots, 100 pizzas, 100 tenders, 100 meatballs, 100 coffees, 55 wings, 55 shakes, 55 pancakes, 55 pasta, 55 peppers, and 155 taters. Okay, that'll be $680. Okay. Well, I took like a three hour nap, I think, which I did not mean to do at all. But it's like, so, I don't know, lately it's just been so hard to wake myself up from sleep. Like even in the mornings, I'd like, I'll wake up at 8 a.m. for example, and then I'll just like acknowledge, I'll acknowledge that I need to get out of bed, but then I'll just close my eyes again and then I'll go back to sleep for like another hour and then just keeps repeating until eventually I wake up at like 11 or 10. And uh, it's just like so hard to wake up lately. I don't know what it is. Usually I'm pretty good about it, but naps after work are pretty brutal because I'm just generally tired from working and being up so early. So I know I'm already gonna like take a long nap, but the longer it gets, the more worse I feel. And so I just really need to do some like sleep control on myself. Like I need to, like something, something needs to change. <laughs> I don't know. With the rest of the day that I have, I just wanted to have a fun day to myself. Um, basically, oh, my concealer just exploded everywhere and it got everywhere. But yeah, basically I just wanted to have like a nice day to myself. I'm gonna go watch a movie. Um, it's called, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's with Zendaya and it's like sort of about tennis. And I looked at the reviews and a lot of people said it was really good. So I was like, I gotta go see it. And I just haven't been to the movies in such a long time, so I just felt like I needed to go. And also, I bought the ticket, and it was only $7, because apparently Tuesdays are like bargain days, so like, that was such a happy little thing that happened to me. <laughs> Saving money is always a good feeling, especially when it's like a surprise to, like, like when you get something, and then you go to the register, and it turns out it's on sale, and you didn't know it was on sale. It's one of the like world's best feeling. Anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna go to the movies, but before that I wanted to run some errands. I'm just gonna go get some snacks. I always have to have a sweet treat with a movie. And then after that, I wanted to stop at the craft store to get some more clay. 
I just keep buying craft supplies and then like not doing anything with it but I swear I'm gonna buy some craft supplies so that way I do do something with it and then after that if I have time before the movie I want to go to Barnes and Nobles just to look at the magazines because yeah I just really love reading in bookstores when I can I don't know there's something about reading in places where it's like other people are at that it feels like so much more productive and like I feel like I could read longer. I've actually been really wanting to go to this like book club but it's a whole idea is that you don't talk to anybody you just all read together like everyone meets up in the same place usually it's like a park or a coffee shop and you're all just reading together all reading different books and you all just like leave each other alone and read and I know that idea sounds stupid to a lot of people, but for introverts, that's like the most ideal way to like feel like you're socializing, but like you actually don't have the pressure to like talk to someone. So I was thinking of going to one of them, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm just gonna finish my makeup and then I'm gonna head out. This is the outfit for today. I'm sort of given like French vibes with the striped shirt. And I'm just wearing some slacks and some ballet flats. I almost forgot to eat dinner, which would have sucked because I would have been stuck in the movie for like two hours, just really hungry. So I bought myself some sushi, some sushi. It's not really sushi, it's like just Americanized sushi. I actually don't know how to use chopsticks. Um, so many people have tried to teach me. I could, like, I don't know. I think something's wrong with me. I feel like I should know how, but it's just like a mental block, I think. I give up. I know some people think that going places by yourself is like embarrassing. I don't know. I feel like I've never really felt that. Like I've always wanted to do things alone and just like be independent. And I feel like people who think that's like pathetic or, you know, eating dinner alone is like, is like shameful. I feel like like that just insinuates that you care what people think and I feel like if anything that's what's embarrassing is like caring what other people think so I don't know like I just want to go see a movie so I'm gonna go see a movie I think to a degree like of course I care what people think of me but I'm not gonna let that stop me from like doing things that I want to do for my snacks I couldn't decide if I wanted Twix or Snickers so I just bought both that's what I do when I can't make decisions. And for my drink, I bought a Monster Energy drink. I know, it's so healthy, right? Um, it doesn't have any sugar in it. It must be so healthy for me. But I just bought it because I know I'm going to get kind of sleepy in the theater probably. I used to never fall asleep during movies. Like, never. But the last few times that I went to the movie theater, it's always been late at night and like I just fall asleep like I don't know movie theaters are also just very comforting and it's also always really cold in there and cold temperatures always make me really sleepy so yeah I don't know I just find myself falling asleep a lot more lately in movie theaters the last time I snuck candy into a movie theater there was a lady checking purses and I was like what the heck like that's never happened to me before there was nothing I could do at that point because I was already at the front of the line. So I just opened my purse and she saw the gummies that were in my purse. 
And I was like, oh, how did those get there? And then, like, she looked so mad at me. I was like, what the heck? Like, it's just candy. And she was like, I'll let it slide this time. I was like, okay, thanks, I guess. I don't, I could not care less about, like, sneaking stuff in. Like, the tickets are already, like, horrendously expensive. And the popcorn is like, oh. guys, look, I picked it up. I picked it up. I'm doing it. It's all just so expensive. I don't think the $2 candy is really going to hurt their business that much. I'm sure it is, actually. I'm sure that's why. I'm sorry. Movie. The movie starts at 7 and it's currently 6.02. So I'm just going to go to Barnes and & Nobles and try to read my book for a little and just uh, pass up some time. Okay, the movie was so freaking good. I wasn't expecting it to be that- well, I was expecting it to be that good because I knew it was going to be good because I always look at the reviews first, but still, like, I was just, like, blown away. One of the main reasons why I wanted to see it was because I knew um, Trent Reznor and Atticus- I forgot his last name. Basically, Nine Inch Nails, like, um, produced. Oops, my music started playing. Um, yeah, basically, like, Nine Inch Nails, uh, did the soundtrack, which any movie where they're producing it together is just, it's just gonna be really good. So yeah, the soundtrack was, like, really freaking good. It was, like, really upbeat techno music, which was sort of out of place. Like, it just, like, kind of felt weird at first because it's like tennis and it's like i don't know just really out of place but at the same time it's so out of place that it felt like it was in place at the ending credits um trent reznor was singing so i think there's like a new song or something and i'm gonna try to find it after this i'm sure i'm not sure if it's out on spotify yet but it was so good if you're gonna watch the movie and you're a nine inch or like you're a music fan i would go just to hear the soundtrack because it was so awesome especially in the theaters but other than the music the whole production was really good for the filming there's like a part where there's perspective change and then you became the tennis ball so like the camera was like going back and forth and it just felt so immersive and crazy like <clears throat> it was just really like intense and really good but yeah that's my whole review of the movie also zendaya was really freaking awesome i felt so inspired by her acting and like the way she played tennis i played tennis for one year in high school and i've sort of like dabbled in it i'm i was actually like the worst player in high school like i was the worst on the team but that's because i'm just not a competitive person like i was just having fun and my coach like hated me for that because like he was like this is serious i'm like buddy it's high school junior varsity tennis like i'm just i'm just here to have fun so i never took it serious but like watching movies like that makes me want to get back into tennis so bad so yeah that was that was an awesome movie really recommend it
I feel like there's two types of people in this world. There's people who are happy on their birthdays, and there's people who are sad on their birthdays. And there's no in-between. There's no such thing as being neutral on your birthday. You're either sad or you're happy. For me, I've always been the sad type. Not every year is sad, but I feel like I've started to associate my birthday with negative feelings. And so every birthday sort of like gets projected into negativity just because I sort of anticipate it happening. And yeah, like ever since I was a child, like it's just been that way. So I feel like it's always been sort of like a deep rooted thing in me. I wanted to share a little story about my birthday when I was in middle school, I think. I don't know how old I was. I'm, I, I know it was sixth grade though. So I was pretty little. Um, I was in math class, sixth grade, and it was my birthday. Coincidentally, there was also another girl's birthday and she just happened to be like way more popular than me and had a lot of friends and so all the students were giving her gifts and they were all telling her happy birthday and I don't think like a single person in the class knew it was my birthday so I was just kind of like sitting there and watching like her get all this attention and I felt like yeah of course I felt sad and I'm not an attention seeker like at all. I feel like I'm the opposite of an attention seeker. Like I'll literally make it a point not to tell people it's my birthday so that way they don't have to worry about telling me happy birthday or you know just like anything like that. So nobody knew it was my birthday because I didn't tell anybody so like I don't know what I was expecting but I couldn't help but like compare myself to her and like our situations. And so yeah I was just kind of sad and a little lonely feeling. I didn't have any friends in that class either, so yeah, middle school was pretty terrible for me. Um, little little 12 year old me just was not having it, but yeah, I remember the class was about to end and the teacher had stopped by my desk and he set a little Jolly Rancher candy down like right in front of me, just like a singular Jolly Rancher candy. And he looked me in my eyes and he was like, happy birthday Monica, and I was like, for like, first of all, I didn't think he knew it was my birthday and it was very obvious like he could tell like how uncomfortable I was in class that day. I was just like really shocked that like he remembered it. Um, yeah, I was really touched and I think I started crying whenever I left the class because I just, I just felt so happy that someone remembered it and even if it was something small like a little Jolly Rancher, like it meant the world to me that like I had a little happy birthday present from my teacher. So yeah. It's literally such a core memory for me, like, I don't think I'll ever forget that for the rest of my life. Thank you, Mr. Harris, for giving me the Jolly Rancher and telling me happy birthday when I thought nobody else was going to tell me happy birthday. You're a real one. Anyways, um, yeah, I feel like everyone at some point has had, like, a birthday where something didn't go as planned or they just felt kind of disappointed and, like, they wanted to cry. And it's okay to feel like that. We're all human, we're all allowed to experience human emotions that are negative and aren't always happy. But something that I've learned very recently and something that I'm still trying to navigate is that I can control it. I can control whether my birthday is going to be a good one or a bad one. And it's just so easy to get wrapped up in expectations, you know, whether or not someone's going to buy you a gift, whether or not they're going to tell you happy birthday, or, you know, if there's going to be some big surprise. And, like, inevitably, you're going to get disappointed one year or multiple years because it just doesn't happen. And it's just so much easier to blame someone else rather than yourself. But it's just so pointless because you can't control someone else. You can't control what they're going to do for you how they're going to act around you, how they're going to treat you, like the only thing you're in control of is your own emotions and I feel like my goal now in life is to sort of be more level-headed and keep my happiness to myself because I'm the one that owns it. I spent so many of my birthdays just basically self-sabotaging myself and it would just always lead me into this like never-ending spiral of self-pity, you know, just a big pity party on my birthday and like it would be like oh nobody cares about me oh i'm just like so lonely and i have no friends i have no life and like because i felt that like i became that and it's like it just shows how powerful your thoughts can be and you just really need to be careful about like your perception of yourself and not to mention like those negative emotions really blinded me and like 
made me take for granted what I already had. I have an amazing family that celebrates my birthday with me every year. They all sing me happy birthday with a cake. And so I, I already have love in my life. And like, I feel like there's this desire that's like so fake and superficial to like receive things from people that like you don't even really not care about, but it's like they're like, you just shouldn't place yourself at a lower value than someone else who's like not going to tell you happy birthday like my mom does this thing whenever we get into like an argument or something and i'll be like mom you're kind of making me feel annoyed at you right now and then she's like no monica only you can make yourself feel annoyed and then i'm like i always sort of take it as an attack at first and it sort of feels like she's like invalidating my feelings but Deep down, I always know she's right, and I feel like that's why I get more annoyed is because I know she's right, but like it's so true, it's like all completely in my control and it's all up to me how I like decide how to feel in the moment and what I decide to do with those emotions. Because of course you can still feel negative emotions, but it's just like it's up to you how to regulate them. I'm not a victim to loneliness, to rejection, to abandonment. I'm only a victim to myself. It's a hard pill to swallow for sure, and it's definitely like an easier said than done type of thing. You definitely need to like practice it because emotional regulation is a skill and it doesn't just like come naturally. I feel like it should really be like taught in high school and even like two-year-olds how to emotionally regulate themselves and how to self-soothe. So yeah, I'm a big girl now. Big girls need to learn how to cope with negative emotions and how to project it into healthy um, coping mechanisms, for example, journaling, that's something I've been doing a lot recently, and you know, even going on for a little walk as soon as you feel a little like upset about something just really like helps so much. A personal favorite of mine, this is for when I'm feeling like really, really down, is taking a warm shower and sitting on the floor. It really is like the most like soothing thing in the world. A warm shower literally just makes me feel so much better about everything. I think this will be a happy birthday year for me. I think I'll be happy because I can control it. It's like literally like a superpower. Okay, so I'm not making this just a normal cake. I wanted to shape it like a dog. I think it was in my video where I was looking through my Instagram saved, but I saw a post where someone made a dog shaped cake and I thought it was really cute so I wanted to try to make it. Oh my god, I want to make a dog a cake. I want to make a dog shaped like a cake or a cake shaped like a dog. his third eye is sticking out. <laughs> Go back in. <laughs> I love when cats do that when they like shove their face. I know. Wookie. You're so cute. <laughs> Slippers ID. Look at them. I know, right? Are they so cute? They're just too pretty, so I didn't get them for oh myself. Oh my god. Right? I'm literally trying to be rich. So <laughs> they're so 
so cute. I love them so much. Let's see what we can do here. Mm. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. It kind of reminds me of candy. That's what I told my sister when I first tried it. I was like, it smells, it smells like, it tastes like nerds, kind of. Literally. It tastes like nerds or like a Jolly Rancher that's like a little less sweet. I'm trying to like let my art kind of do its thing. Let mm -hmm. me just go first. Where is this? Oh, I should go here. For her, I have a lot to do today. You do not even know the side quest that I am going I just know you. Okay. So I just gave up like, a few weeks to like actually come to her for this oh week. So much like, we so, you know, like, <laughs> I wish she could be on my fingers forever. Okay, she just finished my nails. They look so she was trying to do them like based off like my style, which I thought was so cool because I feel like, I don't know, she just took so much like consideration into my own style. And so like she did little axolotls on them and I'm like, like I never want to take these off. These are never coming off. I refuse for them to come off of me. They're staying on my body forever. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished packing up the orders and now I'm just gonna go to the post office and ship them. And then after that, I'm meeting up with my sisters because we're gonna celebrate my birthday. Puppies, puppies mochi. Mm. The chocolate. How do you know my chocolate one is my favorite? I told you. Because, uh, Mama's like, are you sure? I'm like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. Red 40. <laughs> Just kidding. That one is not Red 40. Yum. Peach soda. Japanese soda. Pe I've never tried peach before. Me either. That's not yeah. delicious. I love peaches. Ginger chips. I feel like those are for you. I already got me a bag. Ginger chips. <laughs> Apple crisps. Wow. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Nib. Hi. Oh my god, yeah. Take them up. Yeah. 
always change it in your Yeah. You're gonna get your resume taken Playing tennis for the first time in 10 years. Just kidding. I haven't played tennis in like one year maybe. But I'm probably very, very bad. You know what? This one, I'm gonna just like bounce the ball. Oh, that was so good. Oh. Ah. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna beat it on this side. <laughs> 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 nice try, Dan. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Okay. Huh? Alright, she has to know if I wouldn't have to go. I followed the recipe. I don't use the I'm someone that I didn't do the homework. Tried making a smiley face. Dude, y'all's ketchup is not. Or just for real, the Oh, I got the they should have that one smoke, but that's like actually really dangerous. It's like the most efficient killer. I was like, and at the end I was like, oh. I just got back home, just getting ready for bed now. I'm super, super tired. Yeah, I had a really, really fun day today. I think the highlight of the day for me was playing tennis. I like didn't know I was gonna like it again so much like I haven't played like I said like in a year and then I saw challengers I guess Zendaya just really really inspired me like I swear I walked out of that movie with like the most intense craving to play tennis and so um for my birthday I was like guys let's I just want to play tennis for my birthday like that's it <laughs> I literally when we got home I looked up local tennis classes and I signed up for one <laughs> Because, I don't know, like, I just, um, I really, like, want to venture out of my hobbies and outside of my comfort zone. And I think, like, doing classes for something is sort of, like, putting yourself out there, especially, like, socially. Like, I have no idea who's going to be there. It's just for adults, and it's all levels. And I wouldn't say I'm, like, good, but I wouldn't say I'm bad either. I'm just kind of, like, a good medium medium good so i'm a little nervous but i figured it would be something fun to do at least once a week like my sister was saying like people who play tennis live 10 years longer than your average person which i don't know if that's real but i thought about it and i was like you really do see like a lot of old people playing tennis so i just think it's something that i want to keep doing in my life to stay active but yeah that was my day today thank you for everyone who's watching this right now really means the world to me but yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>yeah i did not wake up today thinking i was gonna get this piercing at all when i went with my sister she was getting her tattoo today the tattoo looks really really cool it looks so good on her
And the guy, like, looked at me, and he was like, our piercer is here today, by the way, and she's, like, free right now, so if you want a piercing, just let me know. And I was like, ugh, like, I wasn't, but then, like, I don't know. I just wanted to, like, do something. Yeah, I decided on getting the anti-eyebrow piercing, but instead of doing the bar, I did two um, dermals, so I don't know. I don't, like, I don't really know why I made that decision, but it felt right in the moment so the bottom one didn't hurt that much the second one though the second one really <laughs> that was like pretty intense and I sort of just had to like meditate my way through it because oh my god like she had to like press it into my skin like the piercing and I could like feel it touching my cheekbone like I was like oh it hurts so bad but I was chill like I wasn't like screaming in pain I wasn't like Tom and Jerry, like, making a... But yeah, I really, really love how it looks. I feel like it just matches with my face. Yeah, I'm hoping it heals properly. I'm gonna try to be as careful as I can be without it, because my eyebrow piercing, I used to have one. You can't even, like, tell I had one. The scar's not that bad, but I really liked having it. I just hit it too many times, and so it got irritated, and I had to take it out. So I'm hoping this one just is okay. But yeah, thanks thanks for watching again. Bye guys, for real. Bye for real now. Bye.